Unless you just hate money, B850 motherboards are no-brainer, like say the Gigabyte B850 Eros Elite, which you can get for just $220. Though what exactly do you miss out on then if you buy this instead of something like say its X870 counterpart for $50 more? Or starting off with CPU power, here you get 14 plus 2 plus 2 power phases rated at a maximum of 60 amps. Which sure while is a step down from the 16 plus 2 plus 2 config on the X870, it really really does not matter unless you're just hardcore into overclocking, especially seeing how you also get the same 6 layer PCB for stability as well as the same max rated memory overclocking speed of 8200 mega transfers per second. So okay, what about the PC expansion then? Well you still get the same 3, 4 physical 16x slots. The lane distribution is a bit different than last time, while the primary slot is still PC Gen 5 16x, which is actually pretty neat. Seeing how 5.0 speeds are technically not a requirement for B850, the other two slots are just one Gen 3 lane each, a pretty major downgrade from the X870. Seeing how here they are basically feeding you the metaphorical PC scraps. However, if they are just one lane, why not make them physical 1x just so 1x cards look better in them? Am I the only person who cares about it anymore? Yes, the answer is probably yes. Then when it comes to the storage situation, while well, you only get three M.2 drives here, which while still more than enough for most people, keep in mind that most X870 mobile boards and even some other B850 boards have four. Here the primary one is PC Gen 5 and the other two are both full four lane gen 4 ones. And for the Zerd you do get four SATA connectors, which I always complain about but I guess I have to be a bit more charitable in a more budget board. Then other highlights when it comes to internal I.O. include six various fan headers which may or may not be enough depending on what kind of case you're planning on using with your build, as well as three addressable and one classic non-addressable RGB connector as well. Then moving on to the rear I.O. and the thing that Gigabyte always do best, literally drowning you in the amount of USB type A ports they provide. In fact, this board has 11, which is actually one more than even the more expensive X870, given how they're able to sneak in one more USB 3.2 port in here as well. Though in a way that's kind of compensation for the USB type C situation. Yeah, one of the downsides of BA50 is the fact that USB 4 is not mandatory. Therefore here you only get a anemic 10 gigabit type C port, a far cry from the dual 40 gigabit ports you get on the X870 Elite and oh, most other X870 motherboards. Though again you have to ask yourself if that's something you really need. In addition you also have a, a display port connector for your integrated graphics. Even though most gigabyte motherboards this generation have opted to use HDMI for the integrated port. However, like I said before, I'm pretty sure Gigabyte chooses which port they use on their motherboards by just blindly throwing a dart on the wall and hoping they don't hit a co-worker. Apart from that, you also have 2.5 gig Ethernet, pretty standard for most of these motherboards, as well as Wi-Fi 7 and well, it's Gigabyte, so you already know you're getting just two audio jacks and an optical split of output. Which again, I can't get as mad at as I usually do, given how this motherboard costs just 220 dollars. Apart from that, what I also find interesting is that, at least in my opinion, the B850 actually looks a tad better, I'd say, than the X870. So like always, it's really up to you if you really need those additional features of X870 or not. If not, then you can get something like this, which has literally everything you could need and more for way less money. Though, this may not be the motherboard you're looking for either, given how you can still buy much cheaper B850 motherboards, or you can always just go for something last gen like X670 or B650 or B650E, given how you can find those on major discounts and they still support all AM5 CPUs. So if you're still unsure or have literally nothing better to do, why not check out our other videos on those motherboards so you can pick out the perfect one for you, and if you want to buy this one specifically, which you say it's still pretty good, then our links to it will be down in the video description below. Down there you're also going to find a Patreon so you can continue to help you compare every single motherboard out there. Plus huge thanks to Gavin Burns, Justin Rage, Ella Vronyak, Balaj Vilka, Patrick Harrison, not a pseudonym, Max Sumner, Shin Orcroft and Level Up. But anyway that's what it's. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did then remember to subscribe, like whatever and I see you all in whatever I make next. Goodbye everyone. Good. Bye.